Hi and welcome to a new video. As I said in the 18 core Skydeck X OC video I was in Taiwan about one month ago to overclock Skydeck X and during that time frame in that event we also did some Coffee Lake overclocking so today we will talk about Coffee Lake. The CPU is very similar to the 7700K. If you look at the heat spreader itself, you cannot really uh, tell any difference. Also the backside looks almost the same. The only thing that changed is the pinout. So a lot of people wondered why it's not possible to use uh, the Coffee Lake chip on Z270 and Z170, even though both of the CPUs use socket 1151. The reason for this is that the pinout of the CPUs or the socket changed. So back with uh, C270 and Coffee Lake, we had 128 VCC pins or V-Core pins. And on Coffee Lake, we have 146 VCC pins. So that's 18 pins more for power supply of the CPU, which makes absolutely sense considering that we have two more cores on Coffee Lake now because we have six cores for desktop. And if you compare that with Kaby Lake, obviously, especially with overclocking, the power consumption will be higher. There are also rumors that there will be an 8 core soon for this socket, so in that regard it also makes absolute sense that Intel changed the pinout to improve the power delivery of the CPU. The power density of the chip itself is the same as with Kaby Lake, that's why you can also expect roughly the same clocks. So I would say anything from 4.8 to 5.2 gigahertz is possible for ambient overclocking. However, anything above 5.0 gigahertz for ambient overclocking, I would recommend that you delete your CPU. Apparently Intel improved the thermal paste for Coffee Lake, so it's not as bad as uh, with Kaby Lake. So if you delete your chip and replace the thermal paste with a conventional one, like with uh, Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, you will not see the same big improvement as before, so you will only see like 3, maybe 4 degrees Celsius improvement. But if you change it to liquid metal, for sure, the, the temperature improvement will be like roughly 15 degrees Celsius. Since the CPU size is still the same as with KB Lake, of course, the CPU is still compatible with my Dillet Dimate 2. So I did a quick Dillet with this chip and took off the IHS which you can see in this video, it's the same principle. You just put in the CPU in the socket, align it to the triangle, put in the small slider, tighten it, remove the IHS. It's very simple and can be done within a few seconds and it's absolutely safe. A few people commented on the Skylake X video that they want to know the die sizes of the CPU. So I did the die size measurement for Coffee Lake and we have around 152 square millimeters on Coffee Lake i7 with a six cores. Comparing that to KB Lake, we had around 122 square millimeters. So, of course, the die got bigger on Coffee Lake because of the two additional cores. As I said before, around one month ago, I was in Taiwan to do the overclocking event for Skylake X and Coffee Lake. So, of course, we used the Maximus 10 Apex for the Coffee Lake CPUs. And if you compare the, the Maximus 10 Apex or the C370 Apex, to the C271, there is not really a difference to the board. There's a new network chip on here, but apart from that, there are only very small differences to the board itself. The board was actually really solid already for C270, and that's also one thing I really love about the new platform, the, the Coffee Lake platform. So basically, it's still the same as Z170 and Z270. That means the platform itself is very mature, so you don't have to expect a lot of issues if you're an early adopter, which is a very, very, very nice thing, because usually I hate if you buy a new platform that just got released and you basically have to do all the bug fixing or bug detecting for the manufacturer. That really sucks usually. But on this platform, because it's so mature, you don't have to expect a lot of issues. For extreme overclocking, this is exactly how we use the board. So basically we take off all the heat sinks. You can see the PCH is naked and also the VRMs are naked. That's absolutely fine for Coffee Lake because the power consumption even on LN2 is not that massive compared to Skylake X where we saw around 1000 watt peak. Usually we have like 250 to 300 watt on here uh, with heavy overclocking so it's not that bad. The PCH itself only has a TDB of like 6 or 8 watts so it's not really necessary to use a cooler on here even for extreme overclocking. When we do extreme overclocking we have to prepare the boards beforehand to protect it from condensation. So usually we tape all the necessary slots like memory modules, PCI Express connectors and everything else and then we basically just spray the board with some paint to protect it from 
uh, condensation and then in addition we also use some Vaseline on top which is also very good to protect your hardware from uh, sh short circuits or condensation. So let's go over to the event itself. At the event we had Alex from Romania and also Roberto from Italy. Both are very well known extreme overclockers as well on HWBOT. And this time for the event we only used a liquid nitrogen. We didn't use liquid helium mainly because it's only for six core categories so we're mainly competing against the 7800X, Skylake X and the Ryzen 5. 1600x so the competition is not really there because we expected coffee lake to clock the same as kb lake and therefore it should be quite easy to break to break all the current records of course there's still a lot of preparation needed for such events so asus is basically pre-testing a lot of boards preparing all the boards protecting them against uh, condensation and of course we have to bin a lot of cpus so it's not like we're using a random cpu out of a tray no the cpus of course are pre-binned and then we get a set of CPUs that are already binned so they're already really really good and out of those CPUs we test under LN2 which are the best CPUs to break the records eventually. Same as Kaby Lake, Coffee Lake is not using the fiber, the fully integrated voltage regulator therefore we can use full pot which means that we can use our liquid nitrogen container and fill it completely with liquid, nitro liquid nitrogen therefore we can reach around 185-190 degrees celsius on the CPU itself minus 185, minus 190 and therefore we can clock the CPU of course a lot higher than Skylake X because Skylake X is always limited by the integrated voltage regulator. On my Skylake X video I noticed some comments that a lot of people want to see more about the process of overclocking so I will show you the process of running Cinebench at 6.8 GHz. So the first step we have to do is we essentially go to the BIOS and load a safe profile or reset a safe profile. Basically that means we're running 5.5 GHz on the CPU. We, still, we already have the memory profile set. Usually we test the memory profile beforehand on air and water and then just use the same settings on LN2. So the safe setting is 5.5 GHz on the CPU running 1.6 vCore. 1.40 VCC IO and 1.25 VCC SA. Of course those voltages are already quite high and they're already too high for ambient overclocking. So what we have to do is before we apply the BIOS profile settings we cool down the CPU to around minus 120, minus 130. Then we hit the apply button. Usually it's very easy to boot at that temperature with the apex because there's also something that's called a reserved switch. That, that's very helpful actually. It's setting some additional voltages in the background to allow the board to boot at those temperatures. So setting the reserve switch, applying those settings in the BIOS, you can just boot into Windows with those settings. And then all we have to do is increase the vCore. Usually I'm running around 1.8 volt for heavy multi-threading benchmarks such as Cinebench R15. Then the next setting what we have to do is increase the CPU ratio. In this case we are using 68 to run 6.8 GHz on the CPU core. Also increasing the cache to 6.3 GHz to give it a little bit additional performance. Running Cinebench R15 you can see that the score is 2253 points. And considering that this is a desktop CPU this is actually quite a lot. This is competitive with uh, Skylake X which is, a which is HEDT and the main boards are quite a lot more expensive so this is a very very nice platform. What's usually also very interesting is the single thread performance so of course I also did the Cinebench R15 at 6.8 GHz single threaded test and you can see that the score is 299 points and that's actually the highest I have ever seen in a Cinebench single threaded performance. For example Skylake X at 5.5 the 18 core CPU had only 237 in Cinebench and if you have a Ryzen Threadripper for example they're just above 200 points in single threaded performance on LN2 so you can see that Coffee Lake of course heavily overclocked with liquid nitrogen is far ahead of any other CPU. Alex from Romania then took over testing this CPU and he managed to push the CPU even a little bit higher and he got 2306 points in Cinebench R15 which is a new record for 6 core CPUs and if we compare that the record before was with the 7800X Skylake X CPU and that was just with 2025 points so we're around 300 points more 
than Skylake X, so that's absolutely massive. And especially if we compare that with a Ryzen 5 six core CPU, the Ryzen 5 was at around 1,837 points. The highest I could run with this CPU was 6,933 MHz in GPU Pi. The benchmark usually lasts like two minutes, so two minutes with heavy multi-threading load at above 6.9 GHz, that already tells quite a lot. And you can also see in the footage I'm showing you here that, well, if we run full pot on the container, that means that we have like minus 185 degrees on the container itself. You can see that basically the whole board is freezing up. You can see the IO ports are completely frozen, which is usually not a problem because we protected anything beforehand with the Vaseline. So that's absolutely fine, but it's just interesting to see how frozen the motherboard can be and it still works. So for me personally, the best or most interesting benchmark, it's not really a benchmark, but I just like to see how far we can essentially push a CPU while keeping all cores and threads active, obviously. So we pushed this CPU essentially to 7,300 megahertz on all cores, all threads, and that's absolutely massive. We actually saw 7,312 megahertz, but we could not validate this result anymore, unfortunately. So the ha highest validated score we have is 7,300, which is still quite a lot. And I was very satisfi satisfied with this score. So in the end, we managed to break 10 new records with the CPU for the six core categories. So we did like Cinebenches, we did X265 Benchmark, Geekbench, W Prime, XDU and all of that. You can basically read all the details in the ASUS press release. I will link it down in the description. So for, for me personally speaking, it was an absolutely fun event. It was really nice to see how far we can push those CPUs, even considering that they have six core. And thinking about how we can push those CPUs, I think if we can see an eight core coming up in a few months and it would clock the same, that would be absolutely massive. Uh, so gaming wise, if you're looking into getting a new CPU, you should definitely take a look at Coffee Lake because from my point of view, it's gonna be the best performing CPU for sure for any kind of game. So that's it for this video. I hope you had some nice impressions about Coffee Lake, see what it is capable of. Please put down into the comments what you think about this video, what you think about Ca uh, Coffee Lake. Maybe if you're thinking about upgrading, why you're upgrading, or if you're not, why you're not upgrading, why you maybe want to stick to a different CPU. Just let me know in the comments. I would be really interested into seeing your opinions. As usual, enjoy the rest of your day and see you soon.